Brennan, earlier you were saying that you, we can't, you can't, you can't know certain At things. All. You can't know for certain. Well, most things you can't know for certain. Most things you can't know for certain. Mm -hmm. So could you be wrong about everything you claim to know? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever you make that claim, I want to say this as much humility and gentleness as I can. You've essentially given up all knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. It, willing. So, yes. Willing. Um, we're Christians. We go around and we talk with people about Christ, faith, God, death, things of that sort. Mm -hmm. So is there any one in particular that you want to get into or should I pick one for us? All of those are topics that I think about all the time. One of my majors is philosophy, so I have to be in those things constantly, all the time. Fantastic. So whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm open to. Can we start with Christ? We always do the death one. I'm kind of sick of the death one, brother. <laughs> sure, go for okay. it. So, um, you're probably familiar with this statement, but we kind of want your reaction to some of the things that Christ said. So in, in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father if not through me, or some say except through me. So what what is your response to that that uh, statement that Jesus made? The, the I feel like every single time I've had one of these conversations, my, my biggest disconnect is that the doctrine and like the, the dogmatic side of the of the, the faith is not something that really like concerns me. Like, are you guys familiar with Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas? I know he existed. Yeah, he he's someone that took like Aristotelian philosophy and applied it to Christianity, and yeah. that's right. He's theologically and philo philosophically like incredibly competent and he's been the person that like in terms of Christianity I've always referenced for like basis in the in the actual arguments themselves um, so in in this statement like I am the way in in terms of like the dogma it doesn't really mean a whole lot to me but when you get into like the more metaphysical and like the substantive aspects of it that's where my my concerns have always lied, uh, like lied so rather than Rather than the conversation be in the actual like scripture in the book itself, I had always uh, approached it from a more like okay, let's let's talk about the broader overarching concepts. If that makes sense. Okay, I can understand that does make sense, but I would argue that you can't separate the two in this particular case because he does say, "I am the resurrection and the life." Yeah. And then his apostles go on to explain that if you have the Son, you have life. If you do not have the Son, you do, you not, do not have, have life. life. Yeah. So. I'm bringing this up because I'm putting my confidence in him mm -hmm. and who he is and his character. And it seems that you don't. Uh, no, not, not particularly. They're, they're in, that's, that's one of the things that Aquinas says is that there is a degree of faith that's required in order to, to operate and be a part of Christianity. He calls it the sacred, the sacred doctrine. And there is a degree of faith. There is a degree of trust that you have to place that this is the case. And in that, I genuinely hope that you guys find comfort in that and like direction and you guys find what you're looking for I really do I just don't I don't think that that's necessarily the case that faith does not exist within me I'm glad that it does within you guys though I can't find within myself that faith because there's too many questions left unanswered too many holes even in Aquinas that people have been poking and he's widely regarded as the the Christian scholar um, so I can't I can't find the, the truth in that because there's a certain degree of faith required to, to consider it to be the truth. So, so can I ask something really quick, Jacob? Sure. Um, so what would you say is like in philosophy and epistemology, there's a starting point. Mm -hmm. and there is an ultimate standard of truth in philosophy. Mm -hmm. if, you're gonna, if you're gonna claim to know what you know, you have to have an ultimate standard. So I would just ask you, this might help speed the conversation along a little bit. What is your ultimate standard of truth? What is your starting point? That I exist. That you exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything past that is up for interpretation. I okay. can't. I can't affirm uh, to be 100% certain anything past that. So in terms of like a standard for truth, uh, if it logically makes sense, because of course, like the statement, I think I am. If you try to to come up with a solution or some kind of falsifiability for that, well, then you're thinking. You're thinking about trying to get out of that, and then you're back into the same loop. So that's like a statement that's not falsifiable. You're not able to prove that you don't exist because to prove that you don't exist, you would, you would have to exist. Um, past that, anything else you can, you can falsify, you can argue against forever. And so the, the, the standard that you're asking about, I don't think is, is a thing that exists. I think that that's more so something that you decide for yourself. So would you say that truth is relative then? 
not not in or the, do you think there is objective there yes. is an objective standard of truth i think that otherwise there is. it would just be absurdity right yeah i think that there is a standard like a standard in terms of like individually we can uh, assess that standard like okay to what degree like statistically am i okay with saying like okay this is probably the case but it's only the to some extent because any kind of study is only going to be like a certain number of people a certain chance a certain degree um what to what degree are you comfortable with that being your your standard of truth uh, i can't identify that for you in terms of myself i just kind of play each of them by ear but the uh relativism i don't think is 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 the case um, okay absurdism i do find myself of gravitating towards absurdism in that respect yeah. in terms of like i have to decide for myself right because because brennan earlier you were saying that we can't you can't you can't know certain At things all. you can't know for certain well most things you can't know for certain most things you can't know for certain mm -hmm. so could you be wrong about everything you claim to know exactly yes yeah. mm -hmm. so whenever you make that claim i want to say this as much humility and gentleness as i can you've essentially given up all knowledge yeah yeah it will so, Yes. Willingly. So what the scriptures actually say, see, we, we have what's called a revelational epistemology. Mm -hmm. We know we know because God has revealed himself to us. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we can have confidence in our knowledge is because God is omniscient. So apart from us being omniscient, we couldn't know anything, which we aren't. None of us are. Mm -hmm. But because God is omniscient, we can know things because he's revealed those things to us. And he mm -hmm. does have all knowledge. So the scriptures say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So that through fear in him, mm -hmm. a, a proper reverence, a healthy fear, not just like we're all quakering about God, but there is essentially a healthy fear that we are to have, we are to revere God. And through that reverence, that is actually the beginning of knowledge. So apart from, okay. we would argue as Christians, from a Christian worldview, we can't even have knowledge apart from Christ. And so it kind of goes back to that same thing. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father if not through me. But I would say that we don't come to Christ just because of the intellectual absurdity or the intellectual suicide. We come to Christ because we're sinners. We've broken God's law. We are unable to please God, but Christ, he was perfect. He, he was without sin, and he died the death that we deserve, and he rose again, defeating death, hell, and the grave, so that everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ can be forgiven of their sins, and not only forgiven, but seen as righteous because of what Christ did on the cross. Um, so the only way to obtain that is through faith in him. And, and that's kind of what we were talking about before, right, was in order to, to actually fully adopt this kind of idea and this kind of doctrine, there is a certain degree of faith required because all, everything that you just said operates on the presumption that the Christian God is the God. And to me, I'm not comfortable making that assumption. I'm not comfortable providing that degree of faith to base the rest of my life on. Mm. if that makes sense. So while we agree in terms of the basis of how things are that you can't really obtain truth without that thing, I leave it at that. And I don't I don't prescribe ascribe that level of faith to to some kind of some kind of god or, or deity or irreverent being. Um, I I don't I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, that's not something that sits well with me. Uh, is there a reason for that that you can think of like why freedom. is it? It's it's really a freedom based thing. Uh, Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a second to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks and farewell, friends.